Robin Yount forgot to stop being great on his 1984 Topps baseball card. All I can say when it comes to picking the best card from the 1984 top set is darn you Carlton Fisk and Gary Carter and Bob Renly and Steve Lake and other Major League Baseball catchers of the time. They all have cards that look great in this set, like baseball personified. But as I have lamented before, one of my goals in this series on the best card from each 1980s base set is not to repeat players and not to repeat patterns, too often at least. Carter and Fisk already have their entries, and catchers run the risk of pile-diving the whole show. So I need to put on my receiver blinders, my own tools of ignorance, and move forward. Truth be told, 1984 Tops was never my favorite set. Aside from the all-time leaders and highlight cards, the awesome purple backs, and a few select guys like Mike Schmidt, Pete Rose, and Don Mattingly, oh, that rookie, I could walk past a table full without feeling too guilty. But when I ran through a bunch of them again for this video, I was surprised at how much really good stuff there is here. And some of that really good? Cal Ripken in a batting cage. Ricky Henderson sneaking off the bag. Tom Brennan going all the way to one knee on the follow-through. That gorgeous Dell Strawberry swing on his rookie card. Hall of Famer Alan Trammell bunting. Jeff Reardon getting ready to throw right in your face. Billy Martin smiling. Bobby Meacham at the top of his release, ready to throw across the diamond to nail a runner. That Meacham card has been a favorite of mine since it sparkled at me in a fresh wax pack back in 1984. Such great action and colors, and a chance to learn about a player I hadn't encountered before. What could be better? And truthfully, I went into this thinking the Meacham might be my pick here. But I forgot about Robin Yount. Shame on me. I forgot how he won the 1982 American League MVP award as his Milwaukee Brewers played all the way to the seventh game of the World Series before bowing down to the St. Louis Cardinals. I forgot how we all sort of forgot about Yount just a bit after that big season as the Brewers slid back into obscurity and Yount slipped into mere superstar levels. For instance, Yount finished 18th in the voting for the 1983 MVP award and didn't even make the All-Star team in 1984. Meanwhile, fans and collectors were on to hotter properties like Strawberry, Mattingly, Boggs, Ripken, and Gooden. Of course, even though he wasn't all that exciting anymore, Yount had plateaued at a really high level, and he stayed there for years. The next time we looked up from our hype, Yount was winning the 1989 American League MVP award, this time as a center fielder instead of his customary place at shortstop. We started paying attention then, because all of a sudden, Yount looked like a good bet for 3,000 hits and serious Cooperstown consideration. So we did like we always do when a superstar or Hall of Famer sneaks up on us. We went back through the card files and started pulling his forgotten pasteboards. And one of those Yount cards that really pops when you see it again is his 1984 Tops issue. Here we have a primetime Yount trotting his home turf at short and pointing to the sky out of frame to our left on the third base side. Can't you just imagine a youngest Paul Molitor over there clamping down for the out? As for Yount, even though he's just in commander mode, he's all action and athleticism, lean and outstretched as he is. His trademark curls flow from under his brewer's cap and his iconic number 19 flashes in the Milwaukee sunshine. It's a brilliant shot, set off perfectly by the card's powder blue accents and the Brewer's logo so evident on Yount's headshot. Is there a better card in the 1984 top set? I won't begrudge you if you say yes, but just keep in mind that you just may be wrong. Like our video? Then like our video and subscribe to our channel. WaxPackGods.com